Come and listen to my story about a man named Jed. A poor mountaineer barely kept his family fed. And then one day he was shooting at some food, and up through the ground come a bubbly crude. Oil, that is, black gold, Texas tea. Well, the first thing you know, old Jed's a millionaire. The kinfolks said, Jed, move away from there. Said, California is the place you ought to be. So they loaded up the truck and they moved to Beverly. Hills, that is, swimming pools, movie stars. The Beverly Hillbilly. <laughs> Some Ellie's critters got into the kitchen and Granny took off a chasing them. I don't know where Ellie is. Young fella, I don't hardly think Granny wants you handling her dishes. I'd best take over for you. Thank you, Uncle Jed. That'll be getting to school anyhow. Well, this is a young fella I had in mind. Well, what you want to do his work for? He don't have to go to school. <laughs> All right, boy, run along. Oh, say, speaking of school, any boys over there might be interested in coming calling on Ellie me? Well, let me think. Uh, yeah. Hey, there's one fella that'd like Ellie Mae just fine. Uh, nice young fella, huh? Oh, dandy. He's the smartest fella in school. Passable good looking? Well, yes, sir. Crazy about dogs and cats, just like Ellie Mae. Well, doggies. That sounds real nice. How about bringing him home for supper tonight, right after school? Well, I can't bring him home right after school. He's got to go to Cub Scout meeting first. <laughs> <laughs> Cub Scout meeting? How old is he? Oh, eight or nine. Forget it. Well, he can come over later on his bicycle. Forget it. Gee, Uncle Jed. Forget it. Doggone, Uncle Jed. I got things in, 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 in long division, short division. Can you never give me anything? Someday, I gotta have a long talk with that boy. <laughs> Brought little Arnie to keep you company while you sick in bed. <laughs> Call my friend the critter doctor over to the zoo. As soon as it closes, he's gonna come by and see what's ailing you. <laughs> little Arnie Duke might not be like getting his face washed right now. Ellie Mae, you in there? Quick, Arnie, hide on the cover with Duke. Granny don't allow dogs in the bed. <laughs> You seen anything of old Duke? He ain't showed up for his vittles. Well, great, Duke's kind of ailing. I reckon that's why he didn't show up for his vittles. But he's gonna be all right. <laughs> What's that moving around in your bed? <laughs> Get riled, Granny. Duke's been feeling poorly, and I didn't want him crawling under the house like he usually does where the critter doctor couldn't get to him. Well, that's mighty kind of you. Crawling under the house ain't so easy anymore at my age. But I didn't mean you, Granny. I meant the real critter doctor. What did you say? I said I called the real critter doctor, the one over to the zoo that's been to college and all. Are you telling me that I ain't fit to doctor a dog? No, ma'am, Granny. I've doctored this family man and beast for 50 years. I've tonic everything from cats to cousins and never a complaint. What's all the holler about, Granny? Dad, you gonna paddle this young'un or should I do it? Well, what she's done at once paddling. Old Duke is ailing. <laughs> you think she called me to doctor him? No, I ain't good enough. Uh, Granny, I don't think Duke is ailing that much. Well, she called that smart alecky college boy critter doctor to come over here. College boy, huh? Now, Granny, Dr. Martin ain't no smart alecky college... Don't fat talk me, girl. Well, if you're gonna get so right, I'll just call a doctor and tell him not to come. Now, uh, hold on, Ellie. Maybe it's a good idea for you to call that critter doctor and tell him to come on over. What did you say? 
Way off the handle. Come on outside. I'll explain it to you. You don't have to explain nothing to me, Jed. The handwriting is wrote on the wall, big and plain. Granny, go home. <laughs> Granny, we don't need you no more. Granny, you is good for nothing. Get out from underfoot. Now, oh, Granny. Now, he says. Don't wait, he says. We through with you, he says. <laughs> All right, Jed. Just send my poor old weary bones back home. <laughs> Rest in peace in the hills. <laughs> Now, you get out of that cedar chest. You're right, kid. Old Granny just ain't worth wasting a good cedar chest on. <laughs> just stuff me in a box and send me home. I wish I kind of talking. Come on downstairs. Oh, Jed, I ain't even worth a box. Just tie me in some old newspapers with a good stout string. You want me to carry you down them stairs? I ain't worth the trouble, Jed. I'll just throw myself out the window. <laughs> you can gather me up in an old gunny sack. <laughs> and if that's too much trouble, you can stick me in an envelope and mail me home. <laughs> Talk downstairs, Granny. <laughs> I guess I ain't even worth the stamps. How about sending me parcel post? <laughs> it ain't Duke. I want the critter doctor to come see you. Tell him me. Is she ailing? Of course not. But he might be just the bow we've been looking for for that girl. You think so? I know he was a college boy. I'd had him over before this. She's always talking about how nice he is and good with critters. But suppose he's married already. Well, you find out. Tell him me. If he ain't, we'd ask him to stay for supper. Yeah. <laughs> Granny had a good idea. Why don't you call that critter doctor and ask him to bring his wife and stay to supper? Well, thank you anyway, Granny, but he ain't got no wife. Oh, now well, that's too bad. Well, I didn't stay to supper anyway. Okay, Pop. And put on a nice, pretty dress. Well, what fur? Cat fur to make kitten britches, do as I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look. Oh, Duke's well. Now we don't have to bother Dr. Martin at all. <laughs> Duke, you're spoiling Ellie's romance. Now get back up to bed and act sick. <laughs> Duke had a relapse. <laughs> Yonder. Ellie May, is this your home? Yes, sir. The way you dress when you come to the zoo and the way you love animals, I always thought you lived on a ranch. No, sir. This is all we got. <laughs> uh, Ellie May, those animals I gave you, the raccoon, the skunk, Possum. You mean to tell me you keep them here? Yes, sir, but they don't mind it. Please don't take them back. <laughs> oh, I won't, I won't. It's just that, uh, well, well, where's Duke? Oh, he's in the bedroom, right at the top of the stairs. Oh, right there. <laughs> A hound dog with his own bedroom. Wow. <laughs> Doctor's here now. You ain't gonna be sick no more. <laughs> right in here, doctor. Hmm. I hope my animals at the zoo never find out how yours live. <laughs> Looks like I'm too late. Duke's just shy. He ain't used to doctors. I'll get you a chair. Duke, 
If you're a hound dog, you got real problems. <laughs> Baby, you're what I need. Say, on a 10% commission, if I sell $30,000 worth of bug spray, you're mine. <laughs> what you looking at, Granny? Critter doctors out there. Dandy looking young fella. But I sure hope he ain't toting more varmints. Oh, Ellie. Get a move on, Ellie. I'll fetch him in and see if his intentions is honorable. Now, uh, wait a minute, Granny. You don't even know he's here to court Ellie yet. You scare him away before they said howdy. Bit of doctors here? Yes, Ellie. We know that. Oh, Granny and me are waiting in the kitchen. You call us out to meet him after his spell. Now, Ellie, that's a might nice-looking young fella at the door. You be nice to him. <laughs> How do you do if I may have a few moments of your time? How do you do? I may have a few hours of your time. What for? Well, I have this wonderful line I'd like to sell you. Is that what you're talking in your suitcase? No, that's uh, another line I'd like to sell you. Get me in order. Simmer down, Granny. I'll help you round him up. Kid, I've been thinking. We hadn't ought to let that critter doctor court Ellie May. Why not? Cause he's the one that give her all these. If he comes courting on her regular, we'll end up with more violence than the zoo. Yeah, now look on the bright side, Granny. She's got everything. Ain't no new ones he can give her. Hey, you are the most complete line of insecticides and pest control products money can buy. Uh, fly spray, mosquito ointment. Moth cakes, roach pellets, you name it, I've got it. Uh, how about going in there where I can sit down? Oh, fine, Andy. There's a nice soft sofa to sit on. I like you. You know, I like you a lot. By the way, my name's Jim Gardner. Mine's Ellie Mae Clampett. You know, if I make enough sales today and something tells me I will, I might just ask you out to dinner. Yes, sir. -ia. Hey! Hey, beautiful. Where are you? Hey, come on in. Hey, gorgeous. Stop your yelling. I'm coming. <laughs> are you the housekeeper here? Well, I try to be. But it ain't easy with all them varmints underfoot. Varmints? Yeah, them pesky little critters. You know the ones I mean. Why, out in my kitchen right now, they were crawling all over my sink. Madam, you are just the person I want to talk to. <laughs> now, let's start with roaches. <laughs> you know how to take care of those little critters? No, and I don't want to learn. I got enough to take care of now. <laughs> Look, let me show you the easy, pleasant way to take care of them. No muss, no fuss, no bother. Just place one of these roach pellets in a dark corner and where they can get at it and presto. I ain't got nothing now, and that's the way it's gonna be. <laughs> all right, all right. How about ants? Do you have any ants? Not in the house, I ain't. You'd be surprised how many beautiful Beverly Hills mansions have ants. I don't care what these squirrely Beverly Hills folks have in their house. <laughs> Me and ants don't get along. And what you want is ant syrup. Ant syrup? Sure, they love it. They'll come from everywhere to get it. Do you know what kind of a doctor you are? You're a dad blame bug doctor. That's what you are. Exactly. You show me a bug, and I'll show you what to do for it. Duke's fine. Just give him a little outdoor exercise. Now, don't you forget Grandpa's expecting you for supper. I'll be back, I promise. I'm very anxious to meet both of them. Oh, this here's my cousin Jethro. Jethro, shake hands with the critter doctor. Howdy. How? You say, is this your car? Yes, it is. Oh, boy. Hey, you think I could drive it sometime? Sure. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm just going down to the zoo and come back. You can drive it right now. Hot dog! There. Now, isn't that a pleasant, fragrant odor? Why, it's a regular perfume. Not bad. What's it for? Flies. Flies! Flies and mosquitoes. I swat them pesky things. Uh -huh. Use this on them, and you'll never swat another one. Close 
Close up your bag of bug riddles and get out of my house. Let me show you what I have for spiders. Out before I throw you out. <laughs> Quiet down, Granny. I thought you was going to wait till Ellie called you. He called me, this dang blame bug doctor. Thought I told you to get out of the house. Now, hold on, Doctor. You just happen to catch Granny in a cantankerous mood. I'll quiet her down. Uh, why don't you sit down? Make yourself to home. Uh, we'll have supper in a bit. He ain't staying for supper. Yes, he is. No, he ain't. Yes, he is. I ain't feed him. If he's hungry, let him eat his fancy bug riddles. <laughs> Honey, if you weren't such a doll, I'd clear out of this bug house. <laughs> Now, Granny, you listen to me. Now, you listen to me. It's bad enough that I have to be sewing clothes for a monkey or washing bed linen after a hound dog. <laughs> but I'll be swished if I'm going around spraying perfume on flies and mosquitoes and giving parties for moths. <laughs> well, nobody wants you to. He does, that crazy bug doctor. Tried to sell me some moth cakes. Moth <laughs> cakes. And if that ain't enough, he wants me to give a bath to fleas. <laughs> really? It's true. Tried to sell me flea soap, flea shampoo, and flea dusting powder. <laughs> Look at how frisky old Duke is now. The doctor sure fixed him up. You see, Granny, he's a critter doctor. He's a bug doctor. <laughs> Don't you have nothing more to do with him, Ellie. But I like him, and he's gonna be here for supper. I ain't cooking for him. Well, why not? Granny just having one of her spiteful spills. Now, you get on out to the kitchen, I'll talk to you directly. No, not that way. I don't want you tying into that young fella again. Go around the back way. Beverly Hills bug doctor. First thing you know, he'll be having Ellie leading a bull weevil on a leash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about a monkey, you know, from a thing washing it. <laughs> Oh, uh, let's leave Duke here with Skipper. Okay. Come on, Skipper. Duke's feeling better now. You two can play cowboys again. I'll be doggone. They do play cowboy. Well, young fella. I reckon my daughter here will be a heap more pleasant company for you than Granny was. I think so. What's all that? Well, these are the insects that love to eat beautiful flowers. And with this one easy-to-use, pleasant-smelling spray, you can take care of all of them. Here you are, sir, with my compliments. Well, thank you. Well, I'll leave you two young folks alone. Sure is perfume. Could be Granny's right. <laughs> it's uh, coming on for supper time. Don't you want to get started fixing vittles? Who for? For everybody. <laughs> Who's everybody? Well, uh, you, Jethro. Ellie? Me? Who else? Well, you know, uh, the company. And who might that be? That nice-looking young fella Ellie Mays got in there. You know who I mean. No. Tell me. The critter doctor. He's a bug doctor. All right, have it your way. But bug doctors got to eat, too, you know. Not my cooking, they don't. You don't have to do no cooking. I'll just fetch some cold hog jowls out of the icebox, and we can open up a jar of pickled turnips. No, you don't. <laughs> Once he gets a taste of my vittles, we'll never get shit of him. Then he can have a taste of my vittles. I reckon I can still cook up a passable pot of grits. <laughs> over my burning body. <laughs> Granny, you're just being a little unreasonable. No, I ain't. I don't want Ellie Mae marrying up with that Beverly Hills bug nut. Instead of grandchildren, you're liable to wind up burping a beetle. It's a brand new dance. You'll love it. It's called the Hooterville Hop. OK, now watch. One, two, three, four, five, six, hop, hop. Huh? You see? OK, now try it with me. OK? One, two, three, four, five, Six, hop, 
Hop! Now turn around and, and we'll dance. Like we gonna dance? Hmm? Oh, later. <laughs> later. Hey, mister, if you want to wrestle with Ellie Mae, you ought to get a better hold on her than that. Hey, you want to wrestle? Hmm? Later. <laughs> hey, Ellie Mae, the critter doctor's out in the hall. And he brung you a present from the zoo, too. Uh, you were a brother? Well, shucks, no. Oh, her boyfriend, huh? Well, uh... Uh, I'm a boy, and we's friends, <laughs> but mostly we's cousins. <laughs> oh, that's great. My name's Jim Gold! <laughs> How do you spell that? <laughs> Hope your granny won't mind. He's still a little wild. Oh, I can tame him? I'm sure you can, but what about granny? Well, ain't nobody can tame her. <laughs> no? I mean, do you think she'll mind having another critter around? Well, let's go ask her. Extra nice. I'll be as charming as my years will allow. <laughs> oh, Ellie Mae, let's put him back in here. In you go. In you go. <laughs> now, Granny, we have invited that critter bug oh. doctor to supper, and it ain't very nice to send him a... Oh, Granny, the doctor's done give me a brand new critter. Ah, what is it? Well, look. Oh. It's a giant, hairy caterpillar with green eyes and big teeth. Looks like a Bob Good Youngin' to me. It is, ain't it cute? Who are you? I'm Dr. Martin. Oh, yes, ma'am. This here's the critter doctor. This is my granny and this is my pa. You're the critter doctor? That's right. Well, who's that bug-happy goomer in the parlor? <laughs> goomer? Well, that's a young fella you said to be nice to. Let's have a word with him. <laughs> Ellie Mae. Get that varmint out of my kitchen! Yes, ma'am, Granny. Did I understand Ellie Mae to call you Granny? What about it? It was such an odd name to call one sister. Sister? Well, you're certainly too young to be her mother. <laughs> but you must be related, because you have all of Ellie Mae's wonderful features. Her beauty of face, figure, her irresistible charm, her sweetness, and her loveliness. Well, I don't know whether it's your talk or this stove, but I'm commencing to warm up to you. <laughs> What'd you say his name was again, Jethro? It's Jim Gar. Oh, mighty pleased to meet you. Same here. Actually, my name's Jim Gar. <laughs> How you spell that? I just won't take no for an answer. You're staying to supper. How can I refuse such a gracious invitation from such a lovely lady? <laughs> You're kind of slight in this one. Don't you? A home-cooked meal would be a real treat for me. I usually eat in a restaurant. Well, you're in for a feast tonight. We'll start off with some crawdad tails, deep fried in possum fat, crispy and crunchy, and then some owl soup. Owl soup? Barn owl. <laughs> and then a special dish, stuffed gopher. You mean uh, gopher? That's only the beginning. Granny, that little bobcat's just getting along dandy with all my other critters. Can he stay? Well, I... I reckon so. That young fella wants to know, can he take you out for supper? That's a wonderful idea. Hold on, Doc. You're my date. <laughs> Have a good time, but don't stay out too late. And behave yourself. No parking deck. <laughs> we won't. Speak for yourself. <laughs> Uncle Jed, I'm gonna have me a car just like that. How are you fixing to pay for it? Easy. You know that fella Jim Gar? He told me how. He said, all I got to do is sell $30,000 worth of these bug vittles. Good luck, boy. Let's get to it. Yes, sir. See you later. Thing like that could only happen in America. <laughs> But no 
Now it's time to say goodbye to Jed and all his kin. They would like to thank you folks for kindly dropping in. You're all invited back next week to this locality to have a heapin' helpin' of their hospitality. Hillbilly, that is. Set a spell. Take your shoes off. Y'all come back now, here. This has been a Filmways presentation.